Hey, Jack Cooper team, I'm Lindley Davis, and you're watching the second town hall of 2022. Today, you're going to hear from Vice President of Labor Relations, Terry Brennan, Chief Financial Officer, Greg May, and President of Jack Cooper Transport, Craig Norwin. Let's go ahead and hear what they have to say. Hi, everyone. My name is Terry Brennan, the Vice President of Labor Relations with Jack Cooper Transport. Uh, glad uh, I was invited to be on tonight. There's a couple things that, uh, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, first thing is something that's uh, been on everyone's mind here recently, and that's the that's the ratification of the the national contract uh, and its supplements. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone that took the time to vote. It's really important that your your voice is heard uh, when stuff like this comes through. So, so thank you for uh, for doing that. Um, you know, this uh, this contract was a a very unique time. Um, you had kind of two things at play. One, you had a company that had had financially struggled over the last three years, and you know you had COVID, and you had uh, the chip shortage and part shortages that really kind of turned where uh, some long haul terminals into into shuttle terminals, and that that really hurt us financially. So we had that going on, um, and then you add in the economic climate with recent inflation. Um, in a very, very tight job market. And it kind of created this, this perfect storm of a struggling company, yet knowing that we had to, uh, to take care of our employees and, and pay them the wage that, that they, uh, they certainly deserve. So uh, we're really happy that we're able to come to, uh, to a compromise to, to be able to address that and, uh, and give a very good wage increase. Um, and uh, we're happy to do it. You guys, uh, you guys certainly have earned it. Um, some other parts of the contract, you know, we're uh, really looking forward to the opportunity to uh, to get in the show everyone that that this is going to be good for for both and lead to success uh, for both you personally um, and us as a as a company. And, and we kind of found through this that we're much better than when we work together than when we work against each other. So, um, you know, this uh, this contract negotiation. Um, I know I've seen many of you for many years, but this was actually my first one from start to finish um, for the entire national. And uh, it was it was quite an experience to say the very least. It was, uh, you know, was to see the professionalism that that arose from from both sides, quite frankly. And we were able to uh, to work through some very, very difficult things, do so in a in a professional manner, um, having the rank and file. Um, in the room as part of the negotiating committee, it was 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 excellent from my point of view. We really got to to get down on more of a granular level on on what was affecting the employees, um, and sometimes even just at their particular location. And we were able to to address a, a lot of those issues, and and hopefully we'll be able to continue to do that in the future. Um, I think uh, you know really in the end, I, I'd have to think both sides of the negotiating committee, the employer side and the, and the union side, when uh, we put in a lot of very, very long hours and late nights in there. And, and we had a kind of a condensed time frame uh, to get this done. And, and everyone uh, dedicated themselves to, to doing whatever it took to, uh, to do that. Um, and we were able to, at the last minute, get, to, get a deal done. And we we're happy to do that. So uh, happy to have a, a three-year labor contract and be able to, to tell our customers we have a labor piece um, for that time and give them that, uh, uh, that bit of, of security. So I'm looking forward to the next three years. I think it'll be good for Jack Cooper. I think it'll be good for you and look forward to the next contract negotiation. Um, we have two people coming up next following me, and this is going to be Greg May and Craig Irwin. Uh, Greg May is the CFO of the company. Uh, Craig Irwin is the president of the company. They'll have some more details about the operational updates and financial updates they're going to share with you. So thanks for uh, for your time tonight. And until next time, take care. Thank you, Terry. Now let's head over to Greg May. Good morning. I'm Greg May, Chief Financial Officer of Jack Cooper. This year has been a challenge as we continue to experience the adverse effects of the semiconductor chip shortage and supply chain disruption. Our revenues have been lower than expected due to build shies and plant shutdowns. Inflation has become a significant factor impacting our operating costs as commodity prices have escalated 
resulting in record-setting fuel prices and rising steel prices have resulted in higher cost of equipment and shortages of parts. Consequently, our operating margins have been adversely impacted and our operating cash flow has been running a deficit. For the first half of this year, Jack Cooper incurred a loss of $28.6 million on revenues of $259 million, excluding a gain on sale of real estate. In May, we completed the sale and leased back of our terminals in Arlington, Wentzville, Fort Wayne, and Claycomo for $45.7 million, resulting in a gain on the sale of $35.5 million. The proceeds from the sale were used to reduce our long-term debt and pay down our credit line. Also during May, we reached a tentative agreement on a new collective bargaining agreement with the Teamsters Negotiating Committee, and that agreement has now, of course, been ratified. The wage increases under the, under the new collective bargaining agreement are now in effect and will be reflected on the next payroll run. Retro of the wage increase to June 1 will be paid on a separate payroll run on August 12th. We will also be converting all payrolls with a two-week holdback to a one-week holdback on September 2nd. The timing of the new pay rates, the retro, and the two-week, one-week holdback conversion are being processed on separate payroll runs to focus on one set of changes at a time and mitigate risk of errors in processing. The total cost of the wage and benefit increases in the new collective bargaining agreement amount to $73.1 million. Because we're operating at a deficit, these added costs must be recovered by increasing our prices we charge our customers and through increased productivity. Price increases have consequences as our customers then look for lower cost service providers, and thus we are unfortunately experiencing some loss of business as a result. We're continuing our refleeting program in 2022 as it remains our highest priority for viability of the company. Coming into this year, we had acquired 213 rigs at a total cost of $58.5 million. We currently have 76 new Freightliner trucks delivered to the trailer manufacturers and another 52 undergoing modification, which will then be sent to trailer build. Total cost of the 128 rigs is approximately $36.5 million. We intend to have all 128 rigs built and in service by the end of this year subject to financing and available liquidity. It should be clear that the business conditions we've been facing are suboptimal. Still, we've managed through it and we are optimistic that our conditions are improving. In June, we had our best month since September of 2020 with EBITDA or earnings before interest taxes and depreciation of $5.7 million, a very positive development. As the chip shortage diminishes and we see more consistent product flow, we fully expect our financial performance will continue to improve. I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. All right, let's see what Craig Irwin has to say. Hi guys, Craig Irwin here, uh, president of Jack Cooper Transport. Just wanted to give you a quick update on a, on a couple of things. And uh, now that we've got the uh, contract behind us, thought it might be a good time to, uh, to t talk about a handful of things here with you real quick. Um, First thing I'd like to give you is just a kind of a general operational update. Um, uh, the, our customers are, are starting to see a little bit of uh, easing in the uh, semiconductor uh, shortage, although we are seeing some parts shortages that are starting to creep up on us, things like uh, window switches and tailgate quality issues and uh, some kind of some random things that seem to be uh, kind of out of the uh, out of left field, but uh, I think the overall um, emergency of the semiconductors seems to be getting slightly better. I do know that that both Ford and GM are are wanting to uh, maximize overtime to the extent that they can have a smooth running process. So. Now, they're probably not going to work a lot of weekends if they don't have the parts for it or if they don't have semiconductors, but otherwise they're going to be wide open. And if they have the supply chain to support it, they're going to be working every single Saturday that they that they have available. So uh, it's going to be busy from the rest from now on to the rest of the year. So um, appreciate anything you can do to, to help support the volume that's going to be coming our way. 
Let me shift gears here a little bit, uh, talk about the contract negotiations that we just uh, got through. Thank you guys uh, for uh, voting that uh, the, the ratification in. So appreciate that. It was a, it was a great experience. Uh, Teamsters are extremely professional, which I greatly appreciate. That has not always been my experience in this uh, business. So I thought it was extremely professional, well, uh, well managed. Uh, it was a tough negotiations. But I'm glad we got it behind us and uh, appreciate everybody's uh, support in the in the contract. I know that there are some some issues that have been worrisome to some of you guys, and one one in particular is the Article 48, Section 3, where we can ask you to take a couple of loads from another terminal. Um, just keep in mind that it's going to be 25% of the board at any given time when you take the dispatch at origin. Uh, we're only going to ask you to take a couple of loads, no more than two loads. It's uh, not going to string you out over the weekend. That was never our intent. So um, it's just to, to use when we need to, uh, when one location is just exploding on us. And, and it's basically asking you to come in and help another foreign terminal just for a day. Uh, you could probably accomplish both of those loads in a day or day and a half at the most. And, and um it's really going to help us operationally and it's going to help us service our customer and our customers are really going to be appreciative of, of the flexibility that we're going to be able to offer them. But it's still our intent to make sure you get home as uh, fast as possible. Um, we, we want you to understand another thing that with these wage increases that uh, we've had to, to, to absorb and some of the other costs that have, that have come with the new contract. Um, we, we know that it's a hard job and, and, and we know that uh, you earn every bit of it. Um, Believe me, I've been in the business long enough to know how hard how hard you guys work every day. Uh, however, there are some there are going to be some uh, difficult decisions we're going to have to make. I'm not sure we're going to be able to keep every location uh, open uh, right now. I, I, I'm I'm not not going to be able to say any locations that might be at risk, but uh, we're evaluating it uh, as we go here and trying to make some tough decisions. So. Not sure that, that we're going to be able to support the increases at every location, but uh, we're going to do the best we can to uh, you know, keep as many jobs as we can. That's always our, our, our goal, and um, we never want to see any locations go away. But, but unfortunately, we might be faced with making some very difficult decisions that uh, nobody really likes to make. So I wanted you to know that as well. Uh, also, another uh, issue in the contract that uh, I think there's been some a lot of discussion on is the third party services agreement that we have in there. And I guess I want to uh, express to you how I hope that this can be, you can see that it, see this as a benefit to you guys uh, because there's a, there's a real good chance that uh, we can pick up some off rail traffic from some of our big locations. Uh, because as you know, the railroad has been uh, really, uh, it's been really constrained and, and really inconsistent. So, uh, if we can pick up some off-rail traffic, maybe going to the East Coast or to Florida from some of our locations, uh, I mean, they, the miles could be really long. If those, those of you who want to stretch your legs and, you know, go across country and switch things up for a while, I think there could be that opportunity if, uh, you know, if we play our cards right. So uh, it's not all bad. I don't want you to think that. It's never our intention to, to uh, eliminate uh, Teamster jobs. It's actually our intention to grow Teamster jobs. So uh, this is a way to provide some uh, some service and to help with some surges and to also uh, maybe give you guys an opportunity to pick up some business that we don't have today. And uh, that that's uh, we've seen that happen in uh, Winsville and uh, we're trying to expand that to some other locations. So more to come on that, but that's our that's what we're shooting for. So uh, last couple of things is uh, for one, the uh, the uh, you, some of you guys have really done a great job in helping us. Uh, train some new drivers that have come into our system. You guys, uh, some of you guys might know we got a rookie program now. So bringing guys right in out of CDL school, teaching them how to drive and teaching them how to become a car hauler. Thank you for the trainers who have stepped up to uh, help us with that. We really appreciate it. We really need more of you. So we see this kind of being the future of our, of our industry. We would really prefer to home grow our own car haulers. So um, teach them how to, we like to do things and uh, you guys are the best in the business. So uh, if you've thought about it, uh, please reach out to your terminal manager and have some further discussions and we'll tell you uh, more details about it. But it's our intent to make this a win-win for everybody, including the trainer. So make sure you're not uh, harmed on any of your wages and uh, use some of your knowledge to teach the next generation so we can continue to uh, 
you know, survive another hundred years, hopefully. And the last but not least, I'd like to just say, uh, uh, please be careful out there. It is extremely hot. I can't believe some of the temperatures we're seeing, especially down in places like Arlington, some record heat uh, wave, uh, heat, you know, heat temp uh, high temperatures we're seeing across the country. Uh, I don't recall seeing it that hot in some of the places that um, that I'm familiar with, but may maybe I just can't remember. But but please stay hydrated. Please uh, take a break if you feel like you're getting overheated. You can't take uh, you got you have to take this serious. You cannot take that heat for granted. It will get you. And I've had a couple of heat strokes myself. And once you've had one, it uh, you become very susceptible to having more. So. Just uh, be careful out there, stay hydrated, take breaks when you need it, and uh, pay very close attention to what your body's telling you to do. So uh, it's a tough job, including the heat now, um, and it's a tough job on a good day. So uh, again, last but not least, thank you so much for all you do for us. Um, appreciate you guys, and um, I will be talking to you on the next uh, town hall in the, in the coming months. Appreciate you. See you later. That was a great update, Craig. Thanks to everyone who joined today and we'll see you next time.